Hi guys, welcome back to Ooh. another episode of the Good Vibrations Only Podcast. Beep, 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 beep. Brought to you by... Hey, come on guys, it's about time to, you know, sponsor. So, we say this all the time because we want somebody to sponsor us. And yeah. we always say, here we got We space. want to put your logos. <laughs> we'll sing a jingle for you yeah. also. You know, just hit us up. <laughs> our email is hey at lukegums.sg so you can just drop us a DM la, anytime. Yeah, okay, anytime now. So, who do we have here today? Today, okay. we have... Renee T! You guys may know her as the director of the Singapore Art Book Fair. Mm-hmm. But to me, she <laughs> she's one of my oldest friends. Even older than... I've known her longer. I am your oldest friend, am I not? I yeah, am your oldest friend. She's my oldest friend. friend. Yeah. Actually, yeah. so uh, I know, I've known her since primary school. Can I put a picture of this? Uh, maybe you run it by me. Ah. Is it the same one where the bully same problem? Oh yeah, yeah. she oh. knows about. I, I know about. I don't know. She knows about my bully lah, but I don't think she knows her personally. Yeah. Cause that was so. I I think Renee and I only became friends in like primary four, three, three. Four. That's right. Three. That's what she said. So three. Mm. So because primary one, primary two, same class ma. Then three, four, then five, six ma. Uh. So I met her in primary three, mm. and then we were best friends ever since, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, last time I got say I got do like the X Men the role play. So I had two very good friends, okay. close friends with me in primary school, Genevieve and Renee. I'm still in contact with Renee. So shout out Renee, hello. Renee. Yeah, so, beep, 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 beep. so um, in class, right? We would do this thing called role play. Yeah. <laughs> no lah. And how how are you? Like. Primary, okay. primary three, primary four, primary three, bah, I think. Do with her law, her and another friend, Genevieve. We just pass. <laughs> we just pretend to be our favorite characters. It, her name in my phone is Kurt. You know, Kurt for Nightcrawler. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Your so, vote. Uh, oh, Kurt. Kurt Swagner. Yeah, Kurt. Hey, why you yeah. say the last name? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, I didn't ask you to say the last name. Last time they say no. we boomer. Mm, <laughs> <laughs> Kurt Swagner. Kurt Swagner. Yeah. So oh yeah, she's my oldest friend. Yeah. Shout out to Renee, man. But Renee has come a very, very long way to be where she is today. And we're gonna just ask her questions about, you know, uh, what she does for a living and then also her new venture called mm-hmm. Thing Books. But we'll get to that later. So anyway, mm-hmm. Renee, can you give us a short introduction of who you are and what is it that you do? Yes, um, I'm Renee. I am the director of the Singapore Art Book Fair. Uh, it's an annual multi-day event that celebrates contemporary art books and zines. Um, I am also the founder of recently newly opened um, online art book shop called Thing Books. Wow! Ooh, put that audio. Wow! Okay. 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 Confetti. Okay. That's nice. Yes. How did your love for literature or well, I want to say art books, but then you have to get into literature first, I guess. Mm. But I don't know, how do your love for literature begin? I guess books in general. Okay, yeah, books in general. Um, I was thinking about this yesterday. I feel like, I thought, I thought it was my sister. Because, okay, so like growing up, I was not mm. really allowed to read a lot of non-religious books. Ayo. Like things other than, you know. Christian books or the Bible, mm. I was not really allowed to read it. Mm. So the very first venture into like proper proper reading was when my sister introduced me to this book called um, Lighthouse Keeping by Jeanette Witherson. Which is essentially like a book about a genderless person who falls in love with a genderless person and then like um, looks to a lighthouse keeper, this old man who basically goes to a lighthouse and like takes care of the lighthouse and operates that lighthouse every single day. Mm-hmm. Like goes and, and talks to him, spends time with him, learns from him. So that is like, that was what I thought was my first venture into, you know, proper literature. Mm. But then it was actually you. Huh? Oh. Yes. Oh, oh because shit. I remember, like, I remember at primary school, we used to have, you know, in like, reading, like, before morning assembly. Reading session, silent reading. Then got silent reading. What are you humming? Yeah. Yes! Oh my, oh my god, yes. It's the ambient music that they play in the background. Oh, not bad. After school. I can't believe, I can't believe you still remember. <laughs> Just can't stop. <laughs> yeah, so then you were bringing books like... 
some some Resident Evil. Oh la ma! Is it true ah? Was it was it was it like Christopher Pike? Oh, e, that one, yeah, that one is those like trashy yeah. romance novel. And then we will read like Harry Potter. Oh yes, yes, yes. And what else? Oh, and then oh, and then also I remember like my parents would dump me at the library whenever they had to go to work, so I would basically spend my time there reading like the Babysitters Club series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was big. Or like Nancy Drew. Nancy I never Drew. read Nancy Drew. Oh, same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, or like Jigsaw Jones, which was this like kids mystery mm. thing. You, you know, I right? have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> but like yeah. So it was it was I was I feel like I've always been reading. Okay. It's just that like I only truly fell in love with it when my sister kind of reunited it yeah. Okay, so that's books lah. Then how about art? Are you into art? Yeah. I mean, obviously right. Mm-hmm. Dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, I mean, cause my dad is an artist. Pretty young thing. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's so rude. Eh. What? What? Hmm? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> because her father's name is Arthur P. Y. T. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Then, so he's P. Y. T. Then she likes Michael Jackson. Oh, so yeah. I would say Arthur mm. Pretty Young Thing. <laughs> I've never heard you say that. Oh, ah, shit! I've never heard you say oh, that. Oh, wow, that's, that's kind of rude. We should read it up. We cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your father is an artist. Yes, yeah, so my dad is an artist. Mm. Um, so I've kind of always grown up around like, you know, a lot of... I wouldn't say a lot of art, but a lot of like him in the workshop mm. with materials and just kind of like doing his thing. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think it was just kind of something that I was very familiar with. Mm-hmm. Something I've always known. Well, what sort of like medium does he like usually like work with? Like, he does a lot of um, sculptural mm. things okay. or like... Even if it's or he does sculptural things on canvas, mm. so he uses like three D materials like metal and nails and um, like cardboard with ridges, basically things that have like that are not paint, right? right. Um, and then he makes like a sculpture on the canvas, so it's it's three dimensional works. That, that's like the ones that we see at uh, Xinjiang, right? Tell us yeah. about the the one that he that was at Changi Airport. Yeah, it that one still... was... I think they removed it. Okay. I think they removed it. Mm. Um, that Can one... we find a picture online? Yeah, I, you should be able to find a picture. We'll, we'll get yeah. a picture. Okay. Um, about that one. Uh. It's just like a hanging sculpture. That's nice. <laughs> that's deep man, that's deep. That's deep. It's really just a hanging sculpture. The, there's one at, there was one at Terminal 2 mm. that I quite liked. It's like these plastic beams and plastic rods. And they were all painted a different colour. So it was like a, a spectrum of the rainbow oh. over like maybe I would say like 50 of these rods, just like a wave and it's like super high. It's hanging from the ceiling. Mm. It's called mm. flying colours. Very deep, right? Yeah. Oh. That's deep. Boom. Yeah. That's yeah. great. I love it when you yeah. too long Nothing, to yeah. no, no, Nothing but, abstract. Yeah, but I always thought it was very amazing because her dad is like the the like his mm-hmm. job is being an artist. Right. And I feel like in Singapore you cannot you don't really hear that very no, often. I mean, yeah. It's respect, like always man. artists on the side. Yeah. You know, mm. that kind of thing. So yeah. so yeah. Yeah, respect. so my mom as in they basically started a company together. Mm. So my mom was the one who brought in all the projects mm. and then he would be the one who to do all the mm. projects. So she was basically like his manager. Mm. So I grew up with that duality that like that creative and the administrative <laughs> together it was right. it was something that i understood very well mm. like so alongside seeing him in the workshop you know painting and stapling and spray painting and all of that she was in her office doing like paperwork right. and like calculating something mm. doing some sort of like finance right. you know so both of it was very it was just something that i was familiar with mm. yeah. yeah so that's, that's always useful uh. mm. then have you done any art yourself i have like one, I've done one one piece. That one one piece. Do you want to talk about it? It's not very great, uh. no, 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 it's way. subjective, Yeah, subjective, lah. Yeah, that's right. It's Tell okay. So I only did it because of because I was I was asked to do an exhibition. When was this? 2018 or something? 2018 or 2019? Was it at Gilman Barracks? It was at Gilman Barracks. Oh yeah, I went. Were you there? Yes. Oops. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> was I there when you were there? No. Oh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I remember. Um, I what did I do for that one? It was something. Was it about fashion? Yes. See, I got gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I did was True I. friend. It was like a. 
it was like a one, maybe like one meter or 1.2 meters by 1.2 meter canvas. It was quite big. And I would paint a layer of black every day, like one layer every day for 24 days. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was more like time based. I think for me that it was that um, the action of like, you know, doing it every day, doing the same thing every day. Um, and and the, the, how do I, how do I talk about this? So it's been four years. Yeah. It was just, a, it was a very personal piece. Huh? Okay. Did you, very dark, huh? did you have to like document yourself like painting like all the time? Like, Someone documented me. Okay. So the thing is that I don't really identify myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. Like, so I work within the arts. Okay. But I do like administrative things within the arts because oh. When you talk to artists, when you talk to like creatives, they are very, very into their practice. Like okay. they, they, it is them. It is, it is what they do. It is what they love. It is what mm -hmm. they turn to, you know, away from like the chaos of life and all of that, right? I turn to spreadsheets oh. and paperwork. So sexy! I love spreadsheets and paperwork. So oh. like, it just so happens that like, it's within the arts, mm. but I don't find joy making art as much as other people do. Mm. Yeah, like when I need to de-stress, I calculate things. You open up Excel and stuff. I open up Excel. Correct. <laughs> 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 no, respect manual. No, like, we need people like that. Yeah, that's an art in itself, like really. Yeah. Excel is <laughs> boom. <laughs> it's... It is, it is. Then, okay, so then, so that's, that's like, you know, your life mm. in terms of literature, art and stuff like that. Um, but then, you became the director of uh, Singapore Abu Fair in 2018. Was that something that Mm. You was this role something that you were, you know, it was leading up like what? what oh, my question cannot. Okay. <coughs> was, this role <laughs> was this role always something that you were working towards? Too? Um, not really. No. Okay. I think it was something that that I chanced upon. Like it was because I was I was. Work, as in the bookstore that I was working at at the time, I was leaving in 2017. Mm. So when I left it, I was like, I need a job. Mm. And the Abu Fair has always been my thing anyway. Like, I was always the one kind of behind it and like running the, the admin and the logistics of it. Yeah. Um, so it only made sense that I take it over mm. after I left. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know whether or not I was going to continue it when mm -hmm. I took it over. But it was just like, as a fallback plan, I'm just going to take over the company and then like if I want to do something with it, at least I have it. Right. If I don't want to do something with it, it's fine, you know, but at least I have it. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it was it was something that kind of I I did not plan or I did not feel like I was working towards it. Mm. Yeah. But it's a huge responsibility, no? Like yeah, as in like so. you do it alone. Mm, pretty it's... much. Since 2018, no. so so it's been happening every year up until now as well, right? Uh, yeah, only 2020 we cancelled because of uh, COVID. 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 Uh, okay, mm. okay. So uh, how? I mean, but it's a huge thing. It has the word Singapore inside. Right? No, that's what it really says. Yeah, like oh. it legitimizes it. Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's it's difficult also because when there's the word Singapore inside, right? Then people think that it's like the government's. Oh. Or people think that it's like some kind of like government funded right. thing. Huh? It's not? Uh? No. <laughs> Did they even like try to reach out? Did like, they reach out? The Arts Council or something? I mean the Arts Council is always there. Like, if yeah. I want their help, I, I, you know, they will be happy to help. Mm. Right? But I, I don't want their help just because like there aren't a lot of big festivals that um, are independent. independent. Okay. Mm. And I right. feel like it's important to keep it that way. Sure. Mm. Yeah, so it's difficult to find like sponsors and investors when there's the word Singapore there because people mm. will be like you already got so much money like, then you do this kind of big festival but then I'm like actually there's no money on there like <laughs> so, it's a one person show and it's a one man a, job yeah, like, and it's not one man job you always have a team with you uh, like a, mm. a, 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 when, when the time comes around as well yeah okay okay so uh, okay okay then how has it been you know like you know the past four years doing it alone as compared to having you know an entire bookstore with you I feel like it's um, it. There's a lot of uh, independence. There's a lot of freedom. I can pretty much do whatever I want, um, and that's like the pros of it, right? Like, as in, there are things that I 
there are these like weird ideas that sometimes I have or someone else has that it's very easy to kind of execute because the team is so small mm. and because you're independent, right? Um, of course, financial backing then is is nothing lah. So that's when it gets a bit tricky. But then I mean, we work around that. It's been fun. I feel like it's been really fun. Um, I don't want to say that like oh it's been very fulfilling because I feel like people who do things for the arts all have this like big dream of mm. like oh you know we're supporting artists and we're doing all this like big great like altruistic thing mm -hmm. but I'm like that's that's where it gets dangerous mm. because then when you're doing things for other people then they don't reciprocate mm. then they don't like oh thank you or they don't like you know then you feel some kind of way correct mm. so I'm like sure I'm doing this for myself la. I'm doing this because it's fun yeah. like you know like I, I do it because I enjoy it mm -hmm. and I feel like I will stop doing it the day I stop enjoying it mm. and that's more important to me than like doing this for some kind of like community or some kind of like yeah. big purpose right because sure if it you know helps other people by by like if it helps other people while I'm doing it mm -hmm. then that's great but I don't want to the aim or the goal exactly la. right like I don't want to fool myself into like uh, you know I'm doing this for the greater good um, because I feel like that's that's dangerous like when you kind of pin your hopes and your purposes and your, all of that on something else um, and then they don't respond or they don't mm. reciprocate with appreciation and all that yeah and what would you say has been like the toughest part of this journey mm. like doing um, Singapore Art Book Fair alone or yeah. just in general just in general Oh yeah, That's I mean, alone is also part, part of it. Mm. I think, um, I mean, there are definitely a lot, a lot of challenges. Like, I feel like financially, of course, is one of the biggest hurdles. Um, but mostly, there isn't, like being alone, there isn't that person to kind of bounce ideas off with. You know, and I feel like having um, a partner or having at least like someone to do it or a team to do it with you, you tend to have the same sort of ideals or you tend to have the same sort of vision but then there's there are other people that have different opinions mm. that you can kind of like bounce off mm. right when it's me i i feel like i need to think of like seven different people's way of thinking in right. like one person's head mm. okay. like there's no person to kind of like verbal spar you need, with. To, con you need to consider all perspective but alone like. yes mm. yeah and i think also that like um, also, I try to kind of detach myself from a lot of it because when you're doing it alone, you I, you put a lot of yourself into it and it becomes very, very personal, mm -hmm. um, which is also dangerous because then when someone criticizes it, then Ooh, you, you take it personally. Yeah. Oh. Right? Ah, okay, As opposed to like spreading it out and having some kind of like team behind you. Mm. Mm. Um, so it's very dangerous because when people know, like for example, like when the exhibitors know it's one person behind this or like one main person behind this then something goes wrong then they then they look for you then mm. you know then it's not I, I don't feel very comfortable with that mm -hmm. um yeah so i think that like it's always i try to kind of separate myself from the process um and whenever we or whenever i talk about the fair or whenever i talk to people or i reply emails i always say we mm -hmm. even it's just like me mm. but so that you know it doesn't f they don't feel like it's one person against them mm. yeah then on the flip side then what would be the highlight for this like past uh, four years of doing um so far book fair like the highlight what is the highlight yeah. or any particular like addition um that you really you know feel like oh snap this was actually wow quite wow, proud of it I think 2018. 2018. Yeah, because 2017 was like a really bad year. Okay. Like, because, you know, it became... Basically, like, when the fair started in 2013, okay. all the way to 2017, it was... It felt like... It didn't feel like an art book fair. Okay. It felt like a craft fair. It felt like um, a, a graphic craft fair. Okay. It felt anything like an art book... Like, anything but an art book fair. Okay. Um, so in 2017, then like we, I, I don't know if you remember, it was in this like small building in Gilman Barracks and it's like a long room. The not lights the, were all pink. Not the NTUC. Not, not that one. It was quite small and then it was like super packed mm. and crowded and there were all these like, like exhibitors there and it just, it just looked really, really crowded because it was very, very small. 
but there were, I think that year we only had like maybe a, a thousand in one weekend or less than that. But then because of the graphics of it and because of like the pink lights and everything, we got a lot of very, very young people. And these are, and then our exhibitors are people who sell like $100 photo books or like um, $50 like hardcover or these like, some of them were, mm. were like that. So then some of the experts came up to me and went like, um, really, I think next year we don't come back with you. Like your, it doesn't feel like an art book fair anymore oh. because then you have these like hardcover photo books next to these like stickers, oh. like uh. illustration stickers, you know. And then they're a bit like, that match, eh? you know. So then I was like, okay, then something needed to change. So I, I maybe I think I took like a year to basically do a lot, lot of research. Mm. I started asking around. I started to um, talk to friends or talk to like people who have been making books or making art books for a while. Um, and then I went to the designer. I went to this like designer and I told him what I I, I told him what I wanted. Then. He, but then I was like, I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't want, mm. you know. So then it was a lot of like kind of collaboration where it felt like he knew what I was talking about, even though I didn't really like, cause he owns up, go and do research also, mm. you know. So then, yeah. So then when 2018 happened, um, I, it was like an entire rebranding. We held it at a much bigger mm. location. We saw maybe like 4,000, four to 5,000 wow. visitors that year. Mm. Um, the exhibitors really like exponentially grew mm. and it was properly curated this time. Mm. Then I remember that that was, that was the highlight because all the exhibitors came up to me, like literally all of them came up to me and went like, good job. This is how it should be. Mm. This is what an art fair should be. Because when you look at like New York and Tokyo, that's what they're doing and this is what it should be. I was like, I remember I went like, while running the fair, I had to go and like, things are going a bit too well. Oi. <laughs> like, I feel like something's bound to screw up and I'm ready for it, mm -hmm. but nothing's screwing up. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that was a good year. Oh, that must have been nice. Oh, yes. I remember the branding was the blue color. The blue one. Oh, yeah, I remember the post, the, 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 the cards. Because we had yeah, it at our store. Yeah, 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 yeah. I put it at our store. I put it at the badges also. Correct. Yeah, yeah, nice. But I, I couldn't see from here, but so I got you. Okay, cool. Thanks. So for people who have never heard or been to the Singapore Art Books Fair, can you explain what it is? Yeah. We are a um, festival that celebrates contemporary art books and zines. So art books are like, art books is like an overarching umbrella theme. Um, the subgenres can be things like artist books. So artist books are things like these, right? So things that are made, like books that are made by artists. Mm but not necessarily, um, or rather it's it's true to its form in that like it cannot take on any other form. So you cannot translate this into an ebook, for example. Mm. It completely loses its, its experience. Right. Okay. right. So a lot of the publications that come out of the art book fair all take the medium of the book into consideration. So from like colour to, to material of paper, <laughs> to the sequence of images and text, to um, the printing, to everything, like basically the binding and everything, mm. it takes that into consideration mm. so that when you are looking at an art book and, or when you're looking at an artist's book, it is exactly how they want you to view their work. Mm -hmm. um, and it cannot take on any other form. Is it only like a physical manifestation of something? Yes, it's a, it's a physical slash book manifestation of a work. So for example, there's like, um, there, is an, there is a book, I don't remember the artist, but basically he, his practice is all about like picking up trash from the cities that he goes to. So he decided to make an artist book in that he would pick up trash and then he would bind them into these um, standard like book, like white, white pages, white cover, white mm -hmm. everything and he presses them with a 200 pound press. Mm. So all the, all the, the things that he picks up from the streets are all within the pages wow. and there's only one edition per city or per place that he goes to. Yo. And it is true to that place because it is from the Yo. ground itself. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Then he makes like different editions for different places that he goes to. Wow, so cool. Okay, we must yeah. get the name from... Yeah, we'll later get it, we'll add, we'll post. To edit in post. So cool. Yeah. yeah. And then like an artist who um, wrote a, a mystery novel but only from phrases used in Turkish slash English translation, tourist translation books. So you know when you go to like a, a 
different country, then okay. you buy like the phrase books, books. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to learn. So she used all the phrases in there and she wrote from the phrases <laughs> a mystery novel. <laughs> oh, it's damn cool. Yeah. Wow. So it's these like, okay. you know, they really, it cannot exist in any other form because it is exactly what it should be mm -hmm. and it can only exist as a book. It only yeah. makes sense as a book. Yeah. I see. Well, do you see, because with now, I mean, this is just like a, a question that I, ha I have. La. With now, like, you know, being the, the digital space being like quite like, uh, I guess, very vibrant right now, would you say some of these like art books or artist books, right? Do, do you see that there will be a trend that there will be art artist ebooks, if that makes any sense? Like, the it will take a digital form, but it's still an art, artist book, I guess, you know? Yeah. But it takes a form of like, you know, a digital. Manifestation. Or do would you do you see do you see it happening? I do, but I feel like also then a lot of things are lost. But then yeah. you know there are things that you can do that uh, with a digital e with a e artist book mm -hmm. that you cannot do with a physical one, like right. incorporate sound or incorporate moving uh, image, mm -hmm. right? It is possible, okay. but I think that it's it's different. Like it, it loses a lot of things that um, that the book form carries mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so when the 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 act of picking up a book and flipping yeah. through it you know it's it's completely lost mm -hmm. the act of like having an artist work in your hands mm -hmm. that one-on-one -on -one experience is completely lost mm -hmm. um, but then you can or rather maybe like video artists can incorporate you know things that they cannot in a book mm. right yeah but I'm not sure how like I'm, I'm not sure if it will take off or I'm not sure if it will become like a trend mm. um, but I do think that it's possible yeah I think with the rise of all these like NFTs and stuff like that you know I I, I think it would be interesting take but I mean like what you mentioned about you know like the physical manifestation of a book the tactile aspect of things yes I think it's something that we yeah. do find parallels with I guess vintage clothing as well exactly. you know? it's I mean now with the whole digital space with the whole like metaverse I mean I don't, I don't claim to know any like too much about it but with the whole like creating an avatar like on online an online persona of yourself buying all these like um, like last thing you know when you play games and everything you like, yeah, you buy clothes or for your, your skins. Ah, exactly, exactly. So, having that online person, like watching a Justin Bieber concert on a digital in a digital. And then you space, tell me Justin Bieber is there. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's different, different yeah, It's very yeah. different, yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's the whole you know contrast between like the physical and digital space. But I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Also, would you would you say then, let's say if your other editions of the art book fair you would welcome people who are attempting this locally like would you yeah. reject that idea yeah i think it would be super fun mm. if someone were to explore like e-artist books or e-art books yeah but actually because because covid hit um in 2020 like a lot of the art book fairs around the world went online oh. so they had like virtual art book fairs oh. what were some like i guess like things that you've seen on what are some common things that you see that they, they've that done differently as a as compared to a physical art book fair? So like, um, there were some like... Uh, New York, what they did was they tried to replicate uh, the experience for exhibitors. So like, at the art book fair, you know, exhibitors will, will set up their table, mm. right? Then they will display books on their table, then they will set up their wall, they will display, you know, their logos and their everything. So they made that into a virtual space where they gave every exhibitor a website mm. to design their table Ooh. right their online table okay. um, and then they had like live chats you know where you can then like chat with the exhibitor online yeah. so it's like talking to the exhibitor mm. in real life um, Tokyo did a virtual walkthrough so it's like a three a 2D 3D space mm -hmm. of the affair and then you can walk through it and then click and then go into into like the exhibitor Ooh. yeah yeah so there were a lot, a lot of these like interesting ideas that came up but we didn't want to do one for Singapore because it's very, very different. And I think the the thing about the art book is that like, or rather the art book fair is that everything is physical. And I didn't want to try to translate that into a virtual space um, just because I felt like the essence of it will, will mm. completely be lost. Um, yeah, because it's the interaction with the exhibitors, it's the, it's the, you know, browsing of the books that is what makes it an art book fair. Yeah. More so than like, say, 
um, like fiction and literature and reading it online. Like when you read mm. an e-book, you don't really lose anything other than the touch of it. Sure. But pretty much the gist is still there. Mm -hmm. But everything about the art book fair is completely physical, lah. So I mean, we couldn't mm. do that. Or I didn't want to do that, you know. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know that the applications for this year's art, um, the book fair is already closed. But what advice would you give for any creative out there? If, say, for example, they wanted to apply, like maybe next time, mm. like what kind of advice can you give them? Um, start with what you know. So don't think that making books is difficult. I mean, yes, it is difficult, but don't. It doesn't have to be. You know, so the zine form is is very very accessible. So the zines were made back in the day um, by like music enthusiasts, right? By people who just wanted to say something. Mm. So what they would do is they would cut and paste. A scrapbook. Uh, it's like scrapbook, mm. but it's it's um, in like a a, a zine form la. So it's like stable bound. You know, they copy and paste, photocopy, mm. stable bound, then like give to their friends, right? Um, a lot of them, and it was very much in the music scene. Uh, I think this was like fifties or even way before that. Um, yeah, so people who had something to say or just wanted to express something or just wanted to make a zine about what they liked, you know, uh, would make it in the form of a zine because it's just so easy to do, right? Like you can even draw something, then like photocopy, staple. Mm. That's it, you know. And I think that is the true beauty of it. It's that it's so accessible, it's so easy to make, it's cheap, it's affordable. Um, yeah, so I feel like then, you know, you fast forward to today's age, you know, then people take 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 it another level and then you start to like, it starts to become very well designed, very like um, high production, very expensive. Mm. But I feel like the beauty of it is still in that it should be five bucks at most, even free, you know. Um, and that's how it started, like people were exchanging zines that they made, right? So, yeah, I feel like if you have something to say, just, it doesn't have to be very difficult. There's a zine about this, um, this person who basically... You know how like when you take the bus, mm. then, then you see the moon, and then somehow the moon is just kind of always following yeah. you. Yeah, so this, this person took pictures of the moon every time they were in the bus, and then made it into a zine. That's it. Mm. And then like we'll put a playlist, like QR code to a playlist that like music that music that they hear. Ooh, yeah. Nice. So it really can just be about anything. And I feel like that's when it gets interesting is that is when um, you really just experiment and you just try and you don't think that it's something that is super difficult to do because it's not. Um, yeah. But also don't go into bookmaking thinking you'll make a lot of money. Because <laughs> yeah, cause books don't. It, there's there's a, there's a reason why bookstores are closing around the world. <laughs> We're talking to you, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I feel like you know, it's it's it, <laughs> people people always think that like, oh, you know, I can make book, I can print like one thousand copies, then I'll sell very well, then I'll become like bestseller. Then they make one thousand, then they're like. I only sold two. Then they stop making it. <laughs> <Yeah, long. laughs> then, then they stop making it really because they're like it's so difficult, right? But it's not, right? So you know you can start small, start with what you have, um, start with what you know. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah man. Oh. The link below. Apply next year. <laughs> Apply next year, next year. <laughs> And then the last one before we go into our um, signature Spitfire round. Yes, sir. What can we look? It's, it's still happening this year, right? Yes. What hopefully. can we look? Okay, when will it be, and what can we look forward to, or what can people look forward to mm -hmm. to this year's edition? Mm. It will be at the Singapore Art Museum. Ooh. I know. Is it the cap? Yes, the Kepo one. It's the one. The you know, uh, like when I'm going home, the highway there, the Kepo, the, the left side. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Boom. The PSA. Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. We have so for scale. Last year we had about 60, 50 to sixty something exhibitors. Um, the most that we've had was in twenty nineteen. That was maybe like seventy something exhibitors. Okay. This year we have ninety three. Let's go. Ooh. <laughs> 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 We're very excited. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> Boom. Local and international. So wow. what we did nice. was that we, because international cannot fly down, okay. or like we don't really encourage them to fly down. Mm -hmm. So we did this last year when they couldn't fly down. We got a local exhibitor to adopt an international one. Uh, so they would handle, you know, like buddy buddy, buddy buddy. Uh, 
so international will send their books down, then local will sell for them at the fair. Right. Yeah. So what actually this idea was born because I wanted to do one central table to host all the international exhibitors. Oh. Then my designer say, why you do that? Like you outsource your logistics, huh? Mm. All your manpower, you don't have manpower, right? You outsource. Outsource to your own exhibitor. Wow. You ask them to do the work for you. Huh? Correct, huh? Wow. So yeah. Wow. So we still have international mm. representation. Um, yeah, it's it's just that they won't be here physically. Right. So the overseas like um, exhibitors, they have to find their own proxy, like, kind of. No, oh, so we pair them. Oh. Ah, okay, okay. Like, oh, you link up with this person, you link up with this Correct. person. Correct. Okay. Yeah, based on like nice. the kinds of books that they sell, we try to make it as similar as possible. Ah, so, so cool. the existing local. Ah, okay, okay. I yeah. get it now. The existing. So local when we did that last year, it's very cute because the ones in Singapore will take picture. Uh, this year COVID, ah, uh, so the car very thin, uh, <laughs> so don't expect your books to sell a lot. Uh. I take picture, I show you. <laughs> Manage expectation. <laughs> no, so cute. Like, it's not very good. Good, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Um, yeah. So this year we have quite a lot of exciting. Exhibitors. Oh. Um, yes, and it will be 93. So, wow. where where can people look forward to more info? On oh yeah, the, uh, on our Instagram. Oh, okay. Instagram. Boom. We'll put the link over here. We'll plug the link. Boom. Instagram, yes. Facebook, website. Correct. Right. Yeah. Boom. Nice. Boom. boom. <laughs> yeah. So we do a lot on our Instagram. So follow us there because there are a lot of like very cute, very cool things that we do, like art book ASMR. Oh. Mm. You should do that on TikTok. Oh, really? oh, yeah, Renee really? is really? not on TikTok. Really, really, really. The, I'm on TikTok. Really, the, the younger generation. I'm a boomer. No, no, it's not. I, I, I think like the ideas that you have, right? Yeah. That you actually put on like IG and Facebook, right? If you translate that into like a s- smaller scale one, digestible mm. onto TikTok, especially with, you know, things that are very artsy, you know, this kind of vibe, dude, you'll find your tribe, man. Really. I yeah. Yeah. It's just that I need to get. I need to get someone to do it for me because I'm like still trying to figure out f***ing Instagram <laughs> Okay, like <laughs> right, right. Suddenly they introduced Reels time and like, oh my like that, Hold on a second, yeah. what is Reels? Yeah. What is this? Is TikTok, TikTok for older people? For, for, for IG long? <laughs> no, is TikTok no. for IG long? So no, but Canon, I, I honestly think that yeah. there's really a that you mentioned. Singapore Book Fair should be on TikTok Yeah I know, I remember last time if I'm not wrong, but last time got one one uh, content creator on TikTok, I think it's a local. She introduces like books, like local. She read, she. I'm not sure is it art books or just books in general. She just talks about it. Yeah. And then people, like, oh, so then people want her to like introduce more books and more oh, books. I know I another. Like I know another TikToker who like talks about art. Like she will just talk about famous yeah, art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then she I just break it down for people in a very palatable way, lah. Like, Cause right. it, you know people don't really want to sit around and hear a grandmother story on TikTok. Mm. So yeah, lah. I mean, yeah. to do something, like that, I think it'd be very interesting. People yeah. out there would be what they want. You know. If you want <laughs> to, <laughs> to help, if you want to help, lah. So lah. Can apply. TikTok. Yes. Boom. Yes. Uh, contact okay. Renee over here. Yes, Boom. Because yeah. I have too much to do. Boom. Too much to do. So. Really, really. Yeah, I can consider. Yeah, I can consider. Hmm. Okay, so now that we've uh, talked about, you know, your family, the book fair, literature, stuff like that, let's, let's move things a little faster. We're gonna do this Spitfire round. Is it I must answer very fast? No lah, it's very slow lah. We, we ask fast, fast lah. We, we, we ask fast. But I don't need to like, pam pam pam, right? It'd be best if you can, but yeah. then if not, you can take your time lah. You okay. can take your time to um, explain this stuff. Oh, explain yeah. later. Okay. Explain, okay. I don't have explain to explain it after I answer. Maybe you can explain after you answer. Yeah, you can ask me after I answer. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. If I, got things to explain lah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I try. Okay. I'm very slow. I'm like, no. I'm slow Antonio. Oh, okay. It's okay. <laughs> Do you know slow Antonio? Yes, I know. <laughs> yes, I know slow Antonio. Okay. <laughs> okay, number one, favorite book. Uh, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. What the? <laughs> uh, of all time, of all time. Uh, Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Wow. Oh. Okay, okay. Number two, favorite artist. Uh, Any medium. Felix Gonzalez Torres. Wow. All oh. these names, huh? Eh? We'll put here, we'll put here. <laughs> Favorite dessert? Oh, chocolate cake. Oh, chocolate cake. Boom. That's nice. Mm. Do you like your chocolate cake wet? Then how else? Oh, yeah. Who likes dry chocolate cake? You tell me. Like brown, brownies are, brown brownies not. Brown brownies, brownies are not. It's a little dry. I like the, the soft and moist kind, you know. The awfully chocolate. Yes. Chocolate banana cake. Aunt Jemima, no. kind of Sarah oh. Lee, kind of. No banana. Like, no. In, no banana. <laughs> Why you eat banana with your chocolate cake? Oh, okay. The Sarah Lee, kind of. Oh, Sarah Lee pound cake. No, the pound cake. That one a bit hard. No, nice, Must got icing. Oh, icing. Okay. Oh, fair, fair. Okay, okay, can, can. No mm. problem. Next one. Uh, favorite movie. 
Um, of all time. Wow, that's difficult. I want to say like life is beautiful, but I feel like I've I've watched better ones. Okay. Yeah. But I guess just... off the top of my head, life is beautiful. Life is beautiful. If you think of one better one, you laugh. Then you yeah. Also can. Cut in. Uh, favorite musician. Michael Jackson. Oh. Oh. Uh, favorite way to unwind. Way to unwind. Baking, I guess. Oh. Reading. Uh, sometimes cycling if it's not too hot. Yeah. <laughs> she cycles and. Shout out, man. Yeah. Coffee or tea? Coffee, 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 How coffee, do you like coffee, coffee, coffee. Black. Just like your soul. Just yeah. like my soul. <laughs> Correct. Chicken rice, duck rice. Duck rice. Huh? You know the happy duck rice kind with the tofu and the peanut. That's called happy duck rice. It's called happy duck rice. No idea. It's happy duck rice. You never eat happy duck rice before. What is? That sounds like a very boomer thing to say. Vic, have you hey, please. Happy... Vic knows happy duck rice. Ah! Oops, sorry. What is happy duck rice? Happy duck rice. No idea. Wait, the... it's a brand. No, it's just called happy duck rice. Why is happy duck rice? It's just duck rice with tofu and peanuts. Why is it happy? I don't know. You ask auntie. Why you ask me? It's called a happy duck rice. Right? It's called happy duck rice, right? Yeah. I think Maxwell got sell, you go and try. Oh. So I can go to the shop. Uh, the I mean, it sits on the sun. Happy that rice. Oh. So it's wait, it's a brand? It's not a brand, it's just a But only the Api sells happy that rice. No la, I think other people got sell. <laughs> I don't know. Mm, okay, happy that rice. Oh happy that happy rice. Happy tofu rice. and it's like peanut. Braised tofu yeah. and braised peanut yeah, okay. and like something else that I don't remember la. Fair, fair, fair. Oh, I have eaten that combo, but, yeah, but I, remember I, you... I just order it separately. Uh, it's like Auntie that rice ja. No, no, it comes it together, also... then they call it happy duck oh, rice. I mean, I have it together. Because somehow when you have protein with your duck rice, it's happier. It's happier. Let us know if you know what happy duck rice is. Happy duck rice. Oh. <laughs> okay. Work or play? Work. Yeah, wow. she's a workaholic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go to karaoke song. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say like carpenters. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Please so don't. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> oh my god, call me Boomer no, 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 again. No, we all we all say it. <laughs> we all say it. <laughs> no, I also we got sing on uh the what? Chenming. Chen uh Chenming party. Oh my party. Yeah, during COVID. Uh, Renee, are you on Chenming party? I am on Chenming party. Nice, nice. Yeah. So yeah, we do sing carpenters here and there. Okay. Uh, carpenters is is. I mean, it's a good it's a good OD yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. What was your last impulse buy? The Muji paper shredder. <laughs> for what? For to shred paper lah, then for what? You tell me for what? <laughs> but, but good to use, right? Good to use. It's not bad, it's not oh, bad. Yeah. Okay. yeah, but we can only shred two paper, two paper at a time. Oh. You know, rather than you buy the... You know the paper shredder got uh, the dot one? Uh. It's not portable lah. Yeah, okay. you, you use at home, just buy the simple simple one. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh, who is your biggest inspiration in life? Oh... My sisters. So mm. sweetie. I take all existence. Okay. <laughs> if you could write your own book, what would the title be? I don't know. Eh. I've been thinking about this. Oh. Um, I, I... Any working title? Untitled. Untitled. Just things. <laughs> just things. Just things. Hey, maybe you can write it. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just things. Just things. <laughs> Think yeah. about it. Yeah. I'll, I'll think about it. Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> Give it a think. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> 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 An artist or creator you wish you could work with? Mm, local or no local? Dead or alive also can. Yeah. An artist I wish I could work with. This one is so very difficult. Your dream like guess. Jenny Holzer. Political woman artist. Mm. Mm. Everything goes here. Okay, that's nice. the end of our Spitfire. Was that, that was fun? That was fun, right? I can go on and on. What's right? your favorite dessert? <laughs> What's your favorite? Mm, favorite Jeez. dessert? Wow, wow, wow! I'm really thinking, eh? Maybe, ah, uh, maybe like sago, like mango sago, oh, or like kind of like yam yeah. sago, like the traditional kind of. Uh, yeah, si milu, si milu. Uh, si it's like the, yeah, the sesame paste. No, no, no. Oh, the, the honeydew. Honeydew and honeydew sago. Ah. Uh. No. Wow. Mm. That one nice. Uh. Oh. Mm. 
Oh, oh. Is it like oh. <laughs> 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 No, no, that no, it's nice. Eh? I mean, if yeah, nah, if it's, it's like ang more dessert, then maybe dessert. chocolate cake or but chocolate banana. <laughs> because the banana makes it moist. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's a very good question. I never really thought about it. So. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, then we'll move on to the last part, which is yes. for Thing Books. Mm. Thing you books. started Thing Books not too long ago. What motivated you to start Thing Books? Wait, when, when did Thing Books Yeah, book, when like, did Thing Books start? One month ago. Okay. okay. 10th February. Oh. How long has it been in the works? Like, have you been thinking about like, doing this? Uh, about a few years now. Okay. <laughs> but it was my 10 year plan. Lah. Okay. I think I told you this. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was my 10 year plan to open a book st- open like a uh, art bookstore. Okay. Yeah. But then it somehow happened. No, I mean, it still did. Yeah. Just maybe not physically yet. Yeah. So, yeah. What was um, your motivation behind it? I feel like we don't really have a bookstore in Singapore that is dedicated to art books. Mm. There's Basha graphic books, but then they sell a lot of graphic books. Mm-hmm. Um, so, architecture, fashion, design, etc. Um, but I think that in order to kind of grow the community of art book makers or like artists who make books or zines, um, it's an entire ecosystem, right? So you need more um, people who buy books, but then you need more artists who make books, but then you need more channels to sell books, but then you need more. So the, it's like right now, there's only the fair that only happens once a year. Mm. So when an artist makes books, they're like, I can only sell it at the fair. There are no mm. other bookstores that I can sell it at, you know? So then they don't make it so often. Then because of that, not much content or not much new content comes out. Mm-hmm. Then the audience also gets a bit tired because they're like, we see it every year, we see the same thing all the time, mm. you know. So I feel like then in order to kind of um, grow it or to um, feel like there is more opportunity for art book makers to kind of sell mm. their publications, a bookstore is necessary. Lah. Mm. So I feel like it kind of helps it all also because then when artists make books, then printers make money, papers make money. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. But mm. then the name, can you tell us the meaning behind the name Thing Books? Got meaning, actually uh, no meaning. Oh, meaning uh. Then how did you land on Thing Books? Actually, I wanted to call it Both Hands Books. Okay, so one of the Both one of the yeah, so one of the working title was Both Hands Books because art books you need two okay. hands <laughs> rather than like books mm. that is just like you know art books it needs to you need to hold it with two hands then it felt a bit funny on the mouth when you mm. say it like both hands hey you like, got buy from the both hands books or? Both yeah hands. Both, both, both you know hands. you say it too fast both hands, mm. both hands then I wanted to call it twofold okay. uh-huh. then I wanted to call it Singapore Art Bookshop we basically took a long time with the name oh. then finally one day I was like actually Books as things, then things, then we also, then thing, then mm. oh, okay law. <laughs> so that was kind of how it. Let's just settle, let's just let's just do that lah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's not think about this too much, you know. Fair. So just. <laughs> you could create a lot of thing puns, so yeah. exactly. This, this yeah. It's not bad, it's not bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's it's generic in some sense, but yet it's also a bit memorable, mm. you know, because it's a, it's a bit unique mm. and yet it's like vague. Fair. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's true. What can we expect to find on on, on thing books? Um, artist books, mm-hmm. zines. Uh, so there are quite a lot of local artists who make books. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, okay. art books, artist books, zines. Okay. Any any of any art books right now that you wanna or recommend, talk, recommend to mm. people that you have yes. oh, on hand? Subtly, is it in sure, the frame? Yes. I feel yeah. like this is subtly like. Oh, so there are some that are not in the store, but are some of my favorite. Okay, yes. Um, like this one, Pan Lim and Claire Lim. Just now you downstairs, you eat the. Yeah. Then we I'll pack put a whole fun. The, the <laughs> yeah. Actually, comes it's very like it comes with it all. Wow. Look at this. Wow. Wow. Look at hey, this. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Then you can hear the. Yeah. It's literally the materials. Uh, it is. It is. For. Yes. So wow. then, emoji. Emoji, right? So then, it's oh. essentially like food journeys. Wow. Yeah. Then they have like this kind of oh. receipt. Then they, it's it's a lot of effort. Wow. Okay, that's how everyone falls down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it came like that, lah. Like, yeah. Oh, so, so this cute. is is brand no, it's branded. It's like oh, the wow. rubbish. Oh. oh. Got brand one, okay. 
then the receipt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, lor, this is an artist book, lor. Like, it's you, how you read this online, you cannot. Lor. Yeah, mm, it's different. Lor. And then, there is this, like a flip book. It's like a of, Pampon swatch. Yeah, like, yeah it's like. I think it's a German Museum artist. Museum E. I. Belpa? Mm. Nice. Yeah, so it's like a flip book of, of an artwork. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> of, a, of a cloth just flying up and down a stairwell. <laughs> Oh, so cute. Yeah. Cute. Um, so it's actually the artist's work, but then he made it into a flip book because, because it's you know a moving oh. work, oh. and I mean how else can you present it, but like a video right oh. in, into a book, a flip book. Oh, but this is super thick though. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It, okay. And it's a uh, odd size, uh, no. Can only imagine how. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How much went into production. And then there is this one. Oh. It's called Cabinet of Faces. Um, basically, it's like an artist residency that it, I think it's in Antwerp, where the residency will ask the artist, one artist to, oh, sorry, will ask all the artists to leave one item um, after their residency. Then they will document it uh, in the form of a photograph, and then they will throw it away. Oh. So the only form of documentation is in this book. Wow. So all the artists that have been through this residency will leave something behind like this one, a basketball towel. <laughs> they photograph it, then it's gone. Okay. Um, and then like, yeah. So a lot of famous artists come by um, and they can choose to leave whatever they want. Um, and then, yeah. So the book compiles that. Mm. Mm. So the, the item itself doesn't exist anymore? No. Oh. Only the it only exists form. in this form. Oh shit. Oh snap, yeah. they literally destroy the... Oh. Yes. Oh wow. So they photograph it, then they destroy it. <laughs> Yeah, good lah. Storage problem lah. <laughs> <laughs> People leave time boy. <laughs> um, this one, this one is available in the shop. This is by local artist Robert Zhao Renhui. Okay. So Robert um, deals with nature and ecology in his works. He does a lot of like, uh, he does a lot of, or rather his medium is mostly photography, oh. but um, he photographs like the the nature and animals in Singapore or around the world. Um, so this one, he basically documented all the old wow. trees in Singapore wow. and he made like a map of it, which is like here. Then he talks to people, so there's actually some significant trees in Singapore. For example, the most famous one is the one on our $5 bill. That, like, is that Tembusu. Tembusu? Yeah. Oh, Wait. so scary! We just we went, went to Tembusu, Tembusu College, College yesterday. yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. why is this scary? Because, because now, yesterday, then now, oh, then now we talk about trees, Tembusu. And then the $5 <laughs> is the Tembusu. But how did you know it was... Because the yesterday fifth said it was oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the famous one. But then there are some others that like, you know, so there are these, I, I don't fully know the story behind this, but there are these like tree walkers. I don't know if you have seen trees in Singapore that have this ring around them on the ground. Okay. Have you seen those? Mm -hmm. So basically people go and they walk around the tree. Okay. Yeah. What so does it? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's a story in here somewhere that talks about it. But they're called like, tree walkers. I think it's called tree walkers. So there are these like, it's just very random. It's like a random tree. There's one in Bishan Park. Oh. It's like a random tree with like a very, very clear like mud round. Someone made it? No, so they walk until there's oh. like the mud. Oh. Yeah, so oh, they just walk around the tree. I don't know if it's a ritual. I don't know if it's religious or anything. Interesting. Oh. Tree walkers. Yeah, so then there are these like stories that, that talk about nice. you know the trees in Singapore or like trees that meant something to someone. Oh. Um, so the book compiles it. Wow. So cool. Yeah, and That's then there's like the postcards. Mm. Very cute. The printing is so cool, so yeah, I think it's like silver. Yeah. So I... Okay. Yeah. So well, they even have like, the address like, yeah. Wow. yeah, so you can go and visit the tree. <laughs> tree lovers, man. I think this Check one is this Durian out. tree, yeah. Sorry, I feel like I might oh. get this wrong, Robert, sorry. Yeah, it's like go. I he think like, this he is this tree. durian tree. I feel like he harvests... Oh! This is my durian tree. <laughs> Miss my shop. <laughs> this is water. This is water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So Robert, Robert does a lot of artist books in that like... So his medium is mostly photography, oh. but he tells... Um, stories with his photos okay. and a lot of times or rather when he started his practice a lot of the stories were not true so he would talk about like um the uh, a square apple or like the largest goldfish in the world oh. or like a rainbow fish that kind and then he would weave in all these narratives 
into into his images. Mm. So then people will kind of be like, is it true? Or is it not, you know? So he kind of blurs the line between fact and fiction oh, because photography okay. is a very like it's a very sure medium. Mm. It's something that doesn't lie, right? right? Because what you what you capture is what is. Mm. But then when you weave in a narrative that is that is untrue, then it starts to kind of then you're like you know, where then where then does that boundary lie between right. truth and fiction? So he does that very well with his works. Because he feels like or rather when I talked to him that time, he said like it's very strange because there are a lot of these advertisements that you see, say like they're advertising about a cream, mm. a face cream, then they put a completely unrelated picture of this Actually, one. You're right, uh, you're yeah. So then in that way, like unrelated picture, pi picture that is unrelated to the cream. Ah, maybe yeah. like of a person's face, that's oh. all. Right? Or like, you know, poka green tea, but it's like someone else, it's like a human being. You know, so then it's like, a, then what are the images for? What are they trying to communicate? Mm, okay. So he tries to question that with his work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see. Um, and then this one. <laughs> white on white. Yeah. Oh. On. So it's called, it's things I bought. This one is by Lai Yutong. Hi. Things I oh. bought, things I threw away, things I ate, things I saw, things I made, and other things. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So he takes like iPhone, he basically spends like, oh, this is very wow. heavy. He spends, he spends a long time com um, compiling iPhone images of just things that he bought and ate. And, and then there's a lot of like empty pages oh. in here. Because it, because you know when you see images all the time on your screen? Perfect. It, it becomes too much that there's oh. no pause between. So then you're a bit like, what are you looking at, right? So I think he wanted that, like, you that pause between it and so that you don't, you're not always looking at something. Um, and the images are made small purposefully also because then you will kind of Focus. look at it more carefully. Um, so yeah. yeah, I think he just wanted a lot of space between each wow. image. Um, yeah. So it's like an entire wow. tome. It is it's like, tome. I know. And then there's this last one, which I found. It's a Mexican risograph press. It's called I Wish I Was Artist. It's a very cute. I Wish I Was Artist. It's a very cute, like, <laughs> yeah. Is it printed? It is printed, yes. It's so it's basically so about this person who wishes he was an artist. Then he watches like Bob Ross every day to train. <laughs> Then he doesn't get very so good cool. ideas. So one day, he he thought he got a good idea, uh -huh. right? Then he wanted to like become thief because you know you can't make money being mm. artist. So I go now and become thief. It's just very real. It's very sad, but it's also very like quirky, fun. fun. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Then something about him like setting fire to something. Yeah. Then like. Yeah, so it's just, it also uses the risograph printing process very well. Mm -hmm. um, oh, he got a turtle, then they made art together. <laughs> they made a basket art. Very cute. <laughs> then the so turtle cute. got famous, oh. but he didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute, grim. Like, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, it's just a very real, cool. but very cute, but very funny, but very like sad. Um, about artists. Nice. So cute. Yeah. So, so are, are these things that we can get on Facebook? Um, some of them are. Okay. So like this mm -hmm. is available. Yeah. This is available. Yeah. Others I. For more, please check out. Uh, where where can we find them? Find Thingbooks.shop. Thingbooks.shop. Do you all have an Instagram also? Yes. We do have an Instagram. It's also Thingbooks.shop. <laughs> I made it easy because I cannot remember <laughs> so much. Everything the same. Okay. <laughs> So cute. Thanks yeah. for sharing with us, Leh. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for showing We're us. Also. Oh yes, the, oh, yes, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, did I mean did we sort of mm -hmm. talk about that? Art can be mm, yeah, it's true. So we wrote like um, you know, art can be intimidating to get mm. into. You know, like mm. it's like fashion, you know, sometimes people think oh fashion people are like this kind, like mm. oh very hard to talk to. And art as well, you know, sometimes people it's like they feel like it's unapproachable. Or do you have any advice to give people who want to like go into making art in Singapore? Yeah. Um okay, so I feel like then the art book becomes that medium that in between because I also think that art is very intimidating. <laughs> 
And I feel like the experience of walking into a white cube gallery is very different from the experience of picking up a book. So the book kind of mediates that, right? You can still experience an artist's work without going into a gallery and you can still experience it the way that they intended. Mm. Um, and I feel like in that sense, if you want to get to know an artist, I mean, the first thing, you, I mean, the, the, the good thing to do is to visit their shows, sure. But if it's intimidating, pick their book, pick up their book. Mm. Right. I think um, that's why we push so hard for this medium because we know that art is intimidating and artists also know that it's intimidating to most people. Mm. So, you know, then when you make book, that experience is one-on-one. -on -one. You, can, you can read it anywhere. It can travel beyond you. Um, yeah, but advice to give... Do we want to make art or see or, art? Or maybe even more general, like people who want to be in the arts industry in Singapore. Like, do you have any advice? Mm, yeah. Be in the arts industry in Singapore, I guess well, like, if you're an artist, is it? Yeah, I, I, I think in more so because I guess the, the art industry is very broad, right? You could do like arts management and whatnot. But I think more pertaining to like being an artist. Mm. I think they, they want to live off their own art, be it like any medium, any like photography, la, like, painting, uh, singing, right. or, what, or whatnot. Yeah. Well, what do you think? It's like a good advice for them like um visit shows i think there are very there are a lot of um good art exhibitions in singapore um and not all of them are in white cube galleries there are actually a lot of smaller independent art spaces uh, that show like a lot of you know local artists and i feel like it is it can be very intimidating especially if you don't know anyone um so go with a friend yeah, and like talk to people um, or sometimes, I mean most of the time the artist is always there, talk to the artist, get to know their work. Um, yeah, I feel like artists are always very open to sharing, especially like local artists. They're very, very open to sharing about their work and talking about their work. So yes, I think it's a good practice to go for shows. Um, as for living off your art, it's not yet that possible. Locally, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of artists have like day jobs um, or side gigs that they do to support their practice. Mm. So that it's actually a very good um, way to work because mm. then, you know, you have money to fund your art. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think being a full-time artist is actually quite rare in Singapore. Uh, so, yeah, get a job. <laughs> Don't quit your day job. Don't quit your day job, but do art on the side, yes. Continue don't to do art. Uh, don't stop. Of course, don't stop. Then I also have one one question. Is I think like, uh, like digressing a bit from this also, but also related to like books also. So sometimes like I, you know, when I read like those like Japanese magazines, right? Then you know sometimes they always like have like a sort of like a feature on like different like bookstores. Like I think I remember I can't remember which Japanese magazine this was, but they had a feature on like independent bookstores around Japan. And I think my question is, is like, why, why is it like, you know, um, why is it that people, at least, okay, I, I'm not too sure whether like the Japanese like indie bookstore scene, like, is it like a very thriving scene? But it feels like there's this beauty or this, this there's this like allure, but even for locals also, like at least friends we know who are in like the design. Uh, you know, every time when they talk about like, oh, you know, I go to Japan, it's always about like the design, the art. And obviously bookstores do come up also. Like, I want to go check out this bookstore. Oh, this bookstore is a freaking mobile van which sells books. So something like that. And then why, why do you think that it's not like the yeah, scene is... Prolific in there. Right, like the scene for like, I guess like indie bookstores or such like places. Right, like, you know, to, to, to be thriving here in Singapore. What, what, what's your like, thoughts on, on this? I feel like, first and foremost, we don't have a very strong reading culture in Singapore. Um, we weren't brought up with the culture to read, and I think more and more so with the you know newer and later generations. I sound like a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> that like, you know, because of, of, I mean, the rise of things that are just so instant. Sure. Um, so, you know, on instantaneous just, and yeah, audible. like everything is just in, in one device. Yeah. Um, that then the idea of reading or the idea of slowing down mm. does not become very appealing anymore. Okay. So I think that like 
the and and then reading also comes with academia right because we read for school or we read for it's never really that we're reading for pleasure right right okay and when we want entertainment we go to movies we listen to music watch youtube videos watch youtube videos we don't read mm. so it's because of that that like there isn't even really a very wide, strong reading culture in Singapore, lah. Right. And that's why, like, then you know, bookstores are not kind of part of that. Right. So that's the disconnect, lah. Like. Yeah, I feel like it all is to do with education, education. um, and and the culture in Singapore, lah. Because like, I mean, you take the train, literally everybody oh, is on their phones. Yeah. yeah. But maybe in different places, I don't know, I haven't travelled in a while mm. But maybe in different places like London or, you know, Paris or New York or Tokyo mm. People are still reading sure, yeah. on public transports, you know um, Yeah, so it's just not really something that we do as a culture, as a, as a people um, Yeah, because reading feels like school Right, yeah, have, it's always, yeah, I think what you say is like right school. Yeah, nice. one of my most um, mm. prized possession in the collection because we have an, we have an Abu library as well, okay. uh, which also kind of like represents zines and, and all of that. One of my most prized possession is actually an A4 sheet of paper. It's one sheet of paper folded twice, right? So it's like A6 mm. of this um, this person's Yong Tao Fu order. So every workplace that she goes to, she will draw Yong Tao Fu oh. like. That she like, she wants tofu, then she wants the sausage, then she'll draw, then she'll write. Oh. And it's just one sheet that she'll give to the person. Oh. And then every workplace that she goes to, she just right? Went. So, so very few people have this, like, and they're all different. Somehow it landed in my collection. Oh. So I have this one sheet of paper that is just like a Yong Tafu order. But it's, it's beautiful because it can be a book in that, like, you know, it's. Wait, the person drew the order and gave to the Yong Tafu store. No, give to the person to order for her. Oh, give to the person, oh. okay, okay. So then like, then the person will be like, oh, do you want it back? No lah, you keep. So some people will throw it away, right? Oh. But she's been doing this for a while. <sighs> so that I'm like, there are actually other people out there who have different Yong Tao orders. But this is a book. It's just that it's distributed in a way that we don't, Yo. it's not, you know? It's like NFT, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's literally what it is. Yeah. It's literally an NFT. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. It's very cute. You so, have one lah, you have one of the... I have one. Like, I order yeah. Yeah. Order for yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it landed in my collection. I feel like somebody. Do you know the artist? I know the person. Mm -hmm. She's not even an artist. That's the thing. Oh. So then I feel like it's beautiful because it can, like something like that can be made by anybody. Yo. And it doesn't have to be high production. It doesn't have to be a lot of copies, but she does it consistently enough that it's something. Yeah. 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 And it's so rare. Too. So if someone were to say they want to pitch their idea to have their Oh, yeah. Work in book. Would you yeah, say course. they should approach you? Yeah. Say. Wow. Drop cool. us an email. Cool. Nice. Okay. Yeah. nice. Make anything, literally, like. Let's go. It doesn't have. It's not difficult. It's really not. Do, do it with whatever you have. Nice. You, you heard it here first, man, guys. Nice. Oh. Not for order. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's about it, huh? Can. for our conversation today. I think we've come to the end of Thank our you. conversation. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you, you Renel. Renee, 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 Renee. Renee. Book, Singapore Book Fair. That's right. All socials in the link below. If you guys have any questions for her, you can ask her directly or you can go through us as well, no problem. Yeah, man. Thank you for Thank watching Thank you for listening this. also yes, for your on um, Spotify. 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 Yeah. Yes. Okay. Boom. We'll see you in the next episode. See you on the next episode. Bye-bye.